Hey guys, it's Miss Robinson. Today is day two of online instruction. So right now, I need everybody to just take a big deep breath because we made it. Day one did not take us out. We are here and we're gonna power through. Yes, there were a few hiccups, but now we're gonna be going through it. It's gonna get easier and easier as each day goes. So, um, today for your math lesson, you're going to be doing 11-2, and you're going to be using a hundreds chart to subtract tens. Now, I have a very large hundreds chart right here. Um, so, a hundreds chart starts with one at the top, and it's got 10 numbers in each row, and it goes all the way down to one. This one goes all the way down to 120. You may not have a large hundreds chart like this, and you may not have access to print one, but in your math sheets today that you either have in front of you, printed out, or they're on the Pearson website in that PDF, you're going to have partial hundreds charts, and over here you actually have a large hundreds chart. So you can use that to help you subtract. Just remember not to write on it because you're going to be using this for a lot of problems, okay? Um, that's really the only material that you will need today, as well as a pencil. Um, before we get started, make sure that you are doing your online stuff. Make sure you do the solve and share every day and turn that in to me because that's going to let, that's going to let me see it, okay? When you press send to teacher, I get a notification that you've done it. Um, and then also, before you continue with this video, you need to make sure that you have watched the Visual Learning Bridge because I'm going to start by talking about the Visual Learning Bridge and then walking you guys through the guided practice and telling you what to do independently. So make sure at this point that you have done the Solve and Share and you've watched the Visual Learning Bridge. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to let you see our learning target for today. It is I can subtract tens using a hundreds chart. So it's just like it sounds. We're going to be subtracting tens. We're going to be using a hundreds chart to help us. Now I've already said if you don't have a hundreds chart that you can physically hold, you're going to have one in your math sheets. And this packet you should have. We sent this home on Friday. So this one you should have in your folder. But if not, like I said, it's a PDF on Pearson Realize. Um, okay, so looking at the visual learning bridge at the top, which you already watched the video about this, but I just want to talk with you just a little bit about it. You can use a hundreds chart to subtract tenths. So the first problem says find 70, subtract 20. Now when we subtract, we're always going to start with the largest number, the bigger number. Okay, that's you always have to do that when you subtract. So we're going to start off at 70, and you can see on this little girl that on her sheet, she on her little partial hundreds chart, she has started at 70. So I'm going to get my large hundreds chart, and I'm going to start on 70 as well. So there's 70. I'm just going to put a little circle around it so you guys can see. Now, it says for every 10 you subtract, you just move up a row. So let's go over that real quick. A row is going to be left to right, just like you would read a book. A column is up and down. So this right here is a column, straight up and down. Left to right is a row. Okay. So when you subtract 10, all you do is move up a row from the number you started at. So to move 20, I'm going to go up two groups of 10, which will be two rows. So I would go up, I started at 70, so this would be one group of, sorry, so I started at 70, this would be one group of 10, and if I go up again, I would be at two groups of 10, and I land on the number 50. So 70 subtract 20 is 50, okay? And the, look at that last box of, of that little girl. She's kind of sitting up in that one. It says to check your work, you're going to count backwards. So you're going to start at 70 and you're going to count back two times by groups of 10. So it would be 70. Well, what 10 would come before 70? It would be 60. And then one more would be 50. Good job. All right. 
guided practice at the bottom of your page. And what I'm going to do to show you how to use a partial hundreds chart is I'm just going to kind of bend my hundreds chart so it looks just like yours. So you don't think I'm using anything different than you are. Okay, so here's my partial hundreds chart. It goes from 1 to 40 just like yours does. Now, the first problem says 40 subtract 10. So I'm going to take my marker, or actually I'm going to use my finger because I'm going to do it like you guys are doing it. I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to start on 40. And then to jump back 10, to subtract 10, I'm going to move up one group of 10. Okay, so if I move my finger up one group of 10, I land on 30, just like they did on number one. So make sure you trace number one and we're going to go on to look at number two. Number two says 40 subtract 20. So again, we're going to start with the larger number, which is 40. So you're going to start at 40. And now to jump back 20, I'm going to jump up two groups of 10. Because if I needed 20, all I would need is two groups of 10. So I would go up one and two. So 40 subtract 20 would be 20. Good job. Now number three says 30 subtract 20. So we're going to start at 30. So everybody find your 30. And we're going to jump back 20. So that would be two groups of 10. So we're going to jump back one, two. And we land on 10. That's right. Now our last one, it's a little different. Look at that. It says 10 subtract 10. So you're going to start on 10. But can we jump anything? Can we jump up any? There's no numbers there, is there? So we have to think about it. Well, if we're at 1, what would be before 1? 0. So 10 subtract 10 is going to be 0. Okay? All right. So that's your guided practice. And now there are a whole bunch of problems on this next page, but I don't think you guys are going to need to do all of those. So let me see. I'm going to write down the numbers I would like for you to do. Okay, and if you'll just do those numbers, that way you don't have to do all of them. So I want you to, and you can circle these as I say it, so you know which ones to do and which ones you to just leave. Okay. So for this page, and I apologize, I cannot find my page number. I guess it cut off when I printed it. So the page that looks like this, you are only going to do numbers 5, 8, 9, 12, 13, 15, 18, and 20. That's all you have to do on this page, okay? So you don't have to do the whole entire page, just these. And I'll leave that there if you need to pause it so you can write them down. So when your parents send me a picture of your work, all you have to do is have these done on that page. That's what I'm looking for. In our last page, which are our word problems, so your parents may have to help you with some words, you're going to do numbers 21 and 24. Okay? So you only have to do two on this page. So only numbers 21. and 24. All right. So these are all the problems you're going to have to do on your own today. Again, 5, 8, 9, 12, 13, 15, 18, 20, 21, and 24. Once you've completed all of those, make sure you do the quick check online and make sure you have your parents send me the copy of your work. And then before I go, I want to show you guys something. I found this online and I thought with everything going on right now, it was such a good thing to have. And it's just, it's a calendar, it says March, and it's a grateful calendar. So it's, in each one of these, it's got a different reason to be grateful for. 
and you're supposed to write a little sentence to go with it. So today is the 19th, so today you're grateful for your favorite smell. So I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think about what your favorite smell is. Clo go ahead, close them, think about it, think really hard. Okay, now I've got a sentence starter that I want you to use and I want you to write a sentence. I am grateful for blank, or I'm sorry, I am grateful for the smell of blank because, and then you finish the sentence. So here's my example. I am grateful for the smell of, of spring flowers because it lets me know that spring is here. That would be my sentence. So I would write spring flowers here, and after because, I would write, it lets me know that spring is here. Once you write this, I want your parents to send it to me, and tomorrow on my next video, I'm going to pick a couple and share with you guys, okay? As always, stay safe, stay inside, um, stay away, stay, practice social distancing, I guess. Um, if you have any problems with any of the assignments, if you have any questions, please email me. Here are, is my info again. Lori.Robinson at bville.kyschools.us Or here's our Remind group. Remember to keep checking out our Weebly. Your iReady login is here and your Pearson login is here. Also, don't forget to do the extra math. That's like our automaticity for these weeks. You guys were rocking the automaticity in the classroom, so now I need you to rock it online so you don't lose those skills, okay? All right, bye guys, I'll see you tomorrow.